How are you going? Welcome to this week's recording. From now on, we start on our Revit. Um, so you need to download the Autodesk Revit. I'm going to be using the 2020 version. You can use the 2021, um, but please don't download anything older than 2020. So Revit's slightly different to CAD, um, kind of similar, a bit easier to use, um, a bit more of a kind of a cool software to use as well, um, a bit more flexibility in it, um, but you'll see that as we go through. So um, let's get stuck into it. We've got a few things that we can do. We can either start a new model or we can create a new family. The families are the doors, the windows, the roofs, the, the concrete and the materials, everything that's already preloaded into Revit. So we're not going to go through and play around with this. You'll learn it more in the structural drafting when I teach you that. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start a new model. So let's go new. And what Revit has is it already has um, four pre-made templates. We're going to be using an architectural template for the first couple of weeks. And then we're going to use structural. Construction, we won't touch base on. Mechanical, you will learn in your building services drafting. So we're going to be using an architectural template. If you can't find it, go browse. Make sure you have the Australian version downloaded. If you don't have it installed, you're going to come into trouble. You'll need to get it. Um, it might be an add-in. Um, if you can't find it, let me know, and I'll help you install the Australian version. But if you don't have it, this part of the course is not going to work for you. All right, so architectural template. We always create a new project. We're not going to be creating a new project template. That's what these files are. I don't want to override them, so I just create a new project. <clears throat> so this is what Revit looks like. Slightly different to AutoCAD. Well, very different to AutoCAD. Um, but let's go through it. We have a few different tabs up here. Our first one is what we're going to be looking at for the first couple of weeks. This is the architectural side of stuff. So in here, I can pick um, walls, doors, windows, columns, roofs, all our little fun things that we need to build a house, They're all stuck in here. Revit draws in 3D um, and it's all integrated. So what that means is everything I do on one plan will affect another one as we'll see when we come through it. So we'll spend a lot of time in the next couple of weeks coming through here. Um, everything is already pre-made for us, so we don't have to go through, create things or draw little lines or anything like that. Everything we've got, Revit has for us. Structure, we'll be looking at this in weeks, um, in sorry, in three and four weeks. And you'll also be doing it for your entirety of your structural drafting class with me. This draws in our concrete and our steel um, columns, beams, and connections. Also, steel. This is here for our customizing of connections. You'll, we won't be doing this in basic drafting, but you will be doing this in your structural drafting. Systems. This is used for your MEP, your building services drafting. This is your mechanical, electrical, and plumbing. All of that will be in here. So again, we won't be covering any of this material through here. You'll learn that down the track. Insert, well, this just shows us, hey, we've inserted a PDF into CAD. We can bring some stuff into Revit too. We can link in Revit files. We can link in IFC. IFC is a different type of file. I'll explain that um, when we get to it. But this is very helpful. This is kind of a universal um, file data that we can bring into anything. So usually what happens, we'll model something in architectural, then we'll model it in structural, and then we'll bring it out into a structural analysis software. Things that might not be um, compatible with the Revit files, the RVTs, but you might have to export to IFC. We can link in a CAD and topography. So topography is the cut and fill or the site levels that we've done. And we can also import things. There's a difference between a link and an import. If we link something, it's a live file. If you change it, it will tell us it's been changed. If it's linked, it just brings it in as a blank canvas. So what that means is if I import a CAD floor plan, if I make an adjustment on that CAD floor plan, Revit won't tell me. But if I link it, Revit will. Uh, load family, we're going to go through this a lot. You're going to hear me saying it uh, every second of the day. Um, load family, 
is basically where we find everything else for Revit. So anything we haven't got preloaded in, we find it in here. So if I want a door that's, you know, uh, my roller door might not be loaded in, I can come through here and I can find my sliding doors, my roller doors, so my sectional or my rolling for the garage. Um, and same thing with any of my other building elements. So it goes in depth with my structural stuff as well. We will be covering a lot of that um, as we progress through and when we start drawing. And let's say, well, you know, this is just our putting in tags, putting in symbols, measuring um, and text. Um, you'll be using this a lot. We'll cover it when we start um, annotating our drawings and you'll be going through it thoroughly in structural drafting. Analyze, um, Revit can do structural analysis. It's not the best at it. RoboStructure or Abacus um, or Ansys is much better, um, but you, you, know, you, you can do smaller cases here. It's much better for using this zoning here, which will cover in your MEP. And that's working out things for your lighting and your air conditioning. Massing and sight, we'll be using this when we look at our cut and fill um, on Revit. We're going to uh, do it in 3D and that way we can get some takeoff lists and things like that. Um, so we'll be covering that for our civil side of things. Collaborate, this is going to be used um, a lot in the structural stuff. So what it does is we import a architectural file. So architect works on something, they send it to us and they go, hey, this is the building we've mapped out. You need to do the structural stuff for it. You need to do the beams, the columns, and the concrete, and everything else. Don't make it clash with our stuff. All right. So what we need to do is we bring in their file. Then we have to do some copy and monitoring and coordination and things like that. And what will happen is if the architect decides to make an adjustment, well, Revit will go, hey, it's going to just pull up a little notification for us down here somewhere. And it goes, hey. The architects changed the ceiling height from 2400 to 2700. What does it going to affect? Rev will tell you, hey, it's going to affect this beam sitting up here, this beam sitting over there. So we'll cover that when we look at our structural side of things. View, this is just taking your sections and details. Um, we will go through bits and pieces of it. Um, really, the only big functions you'll use here will be the call out. Um, and sections, which you can see up here anyway, um, and the user interface here. If you're missing the properties or the project browser, you will need to grab it from the user interface. So just click them on. So make sure they're ticked and they'll come up. Manage, this is for materials and units. Um, you'll cover this in the structural drafting course. For us, everything we're going to be using is already preloaded in here. Add-ins, well, um, Revit can do timber layouts and other functions. Um, we will not be touching on this at all. Um, but just be aware, um, when you go to work down the track, you might have an addition in here for advanced steel or um, for your timber. Um, but yeah, Revit is highly capable. Modifier, well, this is kind of the basic functions that we've seen in uh, AutoCAD. Move, copy, rotate, chamfer, um, extend or trim, offset, mirror, scale, array. Um, the cool thing with Revit is if you hover over one of them, this is the align tool, you hover over it, um, Revit will give you an example of how things work. Okay, so if you ever get stuck, just hover over it and Revit's going to tell you what's going on. Um, our properties, well, this is a property of whatever's been selected. So at the moment, I'm looking at a floor plan, um, currently on the ground floor. All right, that's what I'm looking at. And it's just got things like the scale and, and we'll go through a lot of this when we are looking at, um, when we actually start building a house. Okay. So for now, just be aware, we'll be referring to this a lot, um, and making a lot of changes in here. Our project browser. What it's doing is Revit sets up all of your views that you need straight away. We will create more, we'll duplicate them, we'll do all kinds of things with it, but Revit has a good foundation for you. So it pumps out a few floor plans for me straight away. So ground floor, level one, site, true north, gives me a couple of ceiling plans and all of my elevations, north, east, south, and west. These elevations here are these markers. So north, 
east, south, and west. All right, never eat soggy wheat bix. Awesome. Um, sections, so this here is a section that's given straight away. Um, we'll be using quite a few of these. Um, actually, we'll be using thousands of them. So just be prepared that this is what a section looks like um, on a plan. Um, but when we start drawing, you'll, you'll get used to it very quickly. Um, legends and schedules, um, we will cover this as we start to do things. So Revit will give you takeoff lists for how many doors have you got, how many windows have you got, how many bits of timber rafters do you have, how many concrete beams do you have, uh, how much cut and fill have you got. We can do all of that into our schedules. Sheets, this is what we print from. So we place everything onto a sheet at the end of it and we print from here. Our families, as I quickly mentioned before, is everything that's already in Revit. Um, so all of our functions, all of our um, uh, elements that we use, doors, windows, steel beams, columns, everything is preloaded in. So we won't be creating anything in this subject. All right, so um, what else do we need to know? Well, the other thing we need to just have a quick look at it's down the bottom here. So I'm drawing on a floor plan at the moment. That's why it's highlighted. And you can see up here as well, I'm in the ground floor. This here is my scale. If I click on it, I can change any of the scales that I want. So 1 to 10, 1 to 5,000. And all it's doing is just changing the scale of the drawing. Typically details would be from 1 to 5 to 1 to 25. Uh, some elevations or sections might be a 1 to 50. Uh, floor plans always going to be 1 to 100. Site plan, site drainage, 1 to 200. Then these other ones I don't think I've ever really used. Um, I have no idea what you would use a 1 to 5,000 scale for. Don't ask. Um, or you can customize it. So I can put a ratio of 1 to whatever number that is without the negative, And it will do it for me. Uh, it's probably a ridiculous number, but if I want a 1 to 3, go OK. All right. And uh, it doesn't really do much because there's nothing here, but it's actually zoomed these right in very small. All right, the other thing that's pretty cool about Revit is if I lose everything, ZE on the keyboard, ZE for zoom extends will bring me back to where everything is. A couple of other functions here we will go through as we start to draw. So, well, let's start drawing. Enough of me rambling. Architecture. Well, what we're going to draw, let's draw some walls in. So in between these markers, anywhere in between them, because these are where my elevations are going to be. If I happen to draw outside of it, I can either move it in here, or I can move these back. To move them, I can select it, click and drag. Drag that over, and I can space them out. What you're going to find with Revit is most of the things, we can select it, and we can drag them around makes our life much easier. So, well, all right, what have we got? Well, now I've got some properties here of the wall. So the location, the wall center line, this is where I'm drawing from. It's also up here for my modify. So I can draw from the core or a face. Um, this is if I, so I'm drawing for the wall center line. If I click from here to here, that blue dotted line is where I'm drawing from. That's the center line. If I was to change that now to the finished face exterior, the, da the dashed line is on the exterior wall um, line, which is on the brick. And if I want to draw from the stud, I can draw from the interior. Alright, so it just flips it around the other way. For us, I will show you in class how to bring in a CAD file and draw from that. Um, but for now, just follow what I'm doing. So wall, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to try to find a brick veneer wall. So if I click on here, it gives me all the walls that are preloaded in. So I have some block, I've got a petition wall, just a single brick, some generic walls, my stud walls, curtain walls, stacked wall. My brick veneer, I've got 250 steel and 250 timber. Well, I haven't got a 240 brick veneer. So let's go with the 250 to start off with. Let's make some adjustments to it. <clears throat> so I know that 
um, I want 240, which means my thermal gap is 40 millimeters. So if I click here to edit type, what Revit has is it's got all these type properties that are already preloaded in for that wall. So what it's saying is, hey, the width of this is 250. Your structural material is a stud. The stud is what's load bearing in a wall, not the brick. And we've got some analytical properties here about the thermal rating and roughness and some other jargon. All right, already preloaded in. Well, I want 240, so I need to change this width here. At the moment, it is blocked out. So what we do is we don't draw over this or recreate the property, we duplicate. We always, always duplicate. We duplicate because we're building our own library. I might come down to a job in a year's time and they might go, hey, I want to use a 250 brick veneer. Why? No idea, but they might want to. And that's fair enough. And as opposed to me having to go back through, recreate the wall, well, there's already one there. Let's just leave it there and build another one. So brick veneer, 240 millimeter, timber. All right, okay. So now I've got a new brick veneer wall. This is the one I've just created. Now let's click the edit button here. I have the function of the element and the material and the thickness. So my brick, 110, my air, this one here is 40. My timber is a 90 mil stud, awesome. So I go okay, go okay again. And Revit changes this straight away to a 240 brick veneer wall. The next thing I can see is here in the properties, I have my constraints of that wall. They will tie in up here as well. But my location line is what I'm drawing from. Base constraint, where's the wall starting from? Well, it's gonna start from the ground, it's gonna work its way up. Base offset, zero, is obviously at the ground floor level. We have to understand that we're drawing in 3D at the moment. My top constraint is, hey, how high up is the wall going? So if it's unconnected at the moment, it gives me an eight meter high wall, which is ridiculous. All right, this here for a ceiling level at 2700 is as high as the wall needs to go. We've got a few other things in here that we'll cross off as we progress. The other thing I can do is I can strain it. I can constrain it to the level one. Now level one is four meters apparently. So that brings us back to the first thing that we do when we hit Revit. First thing we do is we set up our levels. So in our elevations, I'm gonna open the north, and I'm gonna open the east elevation. Section is here, but in the north, I have my level one at four meters, my ground floor at zero. So let's click on the ground floor. Let's double click it. Let's change this here to be my finish floor level. Just pay close attention. I'm changing this ground floor here to be finished floor level. That was the plan I was drawing on before. Enter, and yes, I want to rename everything to that. So it changes, that level is my finished floor level and it changes all of my plans for me. Next thing here, level one is my ceiling level. Yes, changes them in here. If I look at my east, it's also changed in, in my elevation as well. And let's just change this here to be 2700 for my ceiling level. Check the east elevation, it's changed it as well. So Revit is a live document. What I change in one plan will change in the other. It's going to be the best and the worst thing that ever happens to you. Okay. You'll go through, you'll detail something, you'll move something slightly, and it's going to affect it somewhere else. Such is life. Now, how do we recreate a level? Well, if I want to put in, say, another level up here for a second story or for the trusses, LL is a shortcut on the keyboard. And this blue line here is taking it straight from there. So if I want it to be 2700 above from there, 2700 gives me 5400 from the finished floor level. Straight across, Revit will snap for me. And now I have another level. I can drag this out so they're in line. A couple other things I can do is if I click here, I click this elbow 
and I'll bend them down and then I can bend it back up as well. All right, that comes in handy when we've got levels that are very close to each other. The other thing is at the moment, these are all locked. So if I drag this one, it drags them all. If I unlock it and then drag it, it drags just the one. Just delete that. If I delete this level, it's already recreated the plan for me. So it's going to delete them all straight away. Other way I can do it is right click um, create similar and I'll get the same function here as well. 2700 and I can draw in that level again. All right, walls. Wall, we've already created the wall. Um, I want it to start at my finished floor level. I want it to come up to my ceiling level. All right, same thing. I'm drawing on my finished floor level. I want it to come up to my ceiling level. Chain is on, so I can keep drawing. We can offset as well. Um, so if I want to draw, say, here, I can offset it by four meters. So if I start drawing, it will draw somewhere up here. Don't really know why you would use it um, for walls, but you can. It's more so for our um, eave lines. Now, let's start drawing um, before everybody falls asleep. Um, let's start over here. So just drawing somewhere within all four of my elevation markers. <clears throat> let's draw six meters straight down. If you happen to put it on an angle, hold shift and it will draw with the ortho on. 3,800. Uh, how far away? Let's go 8,500. Let's come down a little bit. Let's go 20. 200, that was not enough, Nathan. Um, I meant 20,000, that's okay. I can make mistakes, it's fine. That one, let's come up again. Let's jump across. And what Revit will do is it will snap for me straight away. So what you can see is that dash line is meeting there and it snaps for me at the intersection. There and there. Funny looking house, but this is gonna work. So what it's drawn is it's drawn my external walls. Now I have this button here. This is my detail level. If I change this one here to fine, what it does is it highlights everything for me. So if I zoom right in, I can see my brick course on the outside, my thermal gap on the inside, and my timber studs. All right, I can change it here as well to shaded, and shade in the brick on the outside. Realistic's not gonna change much. Um, it changes as per material properties, which we'll cover down the track. Consistent colors, a bit uglier. Um, usually I draw in hidden line. Never really do I draw in shaded um, or realistic. I might for an isometric view, um, but typically hidden line and we just leave it black and white. Um, everything else is kind of used for architectural stuff, um, but we'll have a look into it when we, when we get there. All right, so external walls are finished. Let's do our internal walls. So what I'm after here, architectural, I want my stud wall for my timber, stud timber. Now, let's start drawing on the wall center line. Is it really gonna help me drawing from there? Well, not really. What if I draw from this end point? Well, not really, it's drawing for the wall. All right, so I'm gonna to have to change this again. So let's try the exterior. Nope, wrong side. Just clicking escape to get back. Let's try the interior. It's a bit better. So straight down. All right, so let's just go straight across and have a look. Now what's happened? Well, I've drawn in on the wrong side. So what if I change this now to the exterior? Doesn't do anything. 
All right, hasn't changed much. Hasn't really helped me at all. So I can try to click and drag it. How's that? Well, it's still slightly out. If I drag it again, now I'm dragging everything, which isn't really helping me. This flips it to either side. So that's not really helping me at the moment. If I undo it all and come back to the first point, this first um, was drawn at the wrong face. If I now flip it, still not straight. So I can use the align tool. So I can come through, modify and align. So if you hover over that, it will tell you how to do it. Sometimes in life, much easier to delete it. All right, so I delete it and let's keep going. Um, let's come straight down now. This wall here is not big enough for me anyway. Let's come down, let's draw a bit of a funny house. Um, let's go 9500. Come here. Now what you'll see is Revit trims automatically for you. So you don't have to go through and trim anything. Wall, start wall, external, wrong side, Nathan. Why have you not trimmed? That's better. All right. So flipping this just flips the side of it. Uh, all right. So what's happened is I have drawn it, flipped it, it's lined up and it's trimmed. Now I've gone to flip it back. That's what this button here is doing. It's flipping either side from this axis that I've started. And that's going, hey, you, you've done this. We've trimmed it for you. And now you've decided to be stupid, move it again. We can't do it. So let's unjoin it. Now what you'll see is I have my wall sitting side by side, which is not what I want to do. Well, so here, like I said, I'm drawing, what you can see is the wall was on the wrong side. So let's go to 500 to that, escape. So clicking that and it jumps to where I want it to go. The reason why it hasn't trimmed is the wall isn't intersecting, it's sitting flush. So drag this blue dot down a little bit and it will trim for you. All right, so all I'm gonna do now is just draw some random internal walls, um, just so we can understand what's happening with the house. And in class, we'll have a CAD file that we'll link in and basically trace over to make our life easier. Uh, so let's come through, draw the wall center line. Start one here. Um, where else can I put a wall? Let's put one up here somewhere. That's it there. Um, and let's put a random one. That's the midpoint of that wall. What River is doing is it's finding a reference point as well. That's what this blue um, number is, is 3000. It's taking a reference point from the opposite wall. So if I type in now, if I want it to be say four and a half meters from there, that's this point here, it snaps for me straight away. Um, so let's, if I want to snap the midpoint of this wall, SM will find me the midpoint. Let's draw another wall here at 5000, all right? Very random, I know, um, but it will work for now. So what does this look like? Like really, Nathan, you've just drawn a bunch of stupid things on here. Let's have a look. So if I click this little house up here, it gets me my 3D. So this is what I've got. This is what I'm looking at. Change this here to fine. If you want, you can change it to shaded. You can also change it to realistic. And this is what I'm drawing. All right. External walls, internal walls. So I'm drawing the 3D of my house. If I come back to my elevations, I've started to draw the actual elevation straight away. Back to my finished floor level. Let's come in, let's put in some doors and windows. I'll just have a look and see how long this is going. Oh, half hour, all right. 
Um, I'll, yeah, we'll be right. We'll keep going for another 10 minutes. I'll pause it and do another recording. So let's put in some doors. So door. Revit already has in some standard doors in here. So if I want, let's go for, um, let's use this 813 by 2934. We'll use this for our internal doors. So I can put one, let's say this is a room, so it will give me measurements. I can center it as well, or I can move it to one side. So if I click here, I can then flip it, click this one, the door will flip. Another one here. All right, I'm gonna fix this wall up. So another one there. And let's put another one over here. All right, if I drag it, how's that gonna work for me? I'm just gonna drag the whole thing, that's not what I wanna do. Right, shorten the wall. Let's see if we can align it to there. Escape twice. And let's drag this blue dot down. Better. All right. Um, so let's put in some doors. If I want a nice front door, I can come in now and insert load family, doors. Well, what door do I want? Well, what have we got? Single glass, a couple of little funny doors in here, a couple of more nice doors for the front. Well, I like this one. Let's go with this one. Now, where's it gone? Well, I haven't picked a door yet, so door. Click down here and this is the panel, the single flash panel door that I picked before. Okay, remember those little three squares that I had? And I can put this, uh, let's put it in the middle, why not? Okay, this isn't the most, or this isn't actually a nice house, but you know, this will work for getting ahead around things. Um, and I want a sliding door at the back. I might put a roller door here. So let's go insert load family, still on doors, it's still there for us. So let's put in a sliding door. Let's go for a four panel sliding door or two. No, let's go for four, put a big one. Open. Architecture door. Sliding door's already here for me. I have type one. Now, how big is that wall? If I hover over this, it doesn't look very big compared to my wall. So edit type. The width is 2500 wide. I can duplicate it. Let's go um, aluminium sliding door. It's going to be 2100 high. Let's make it 3600 wide. So my width, 3600 height. 2143, that's okay. All right, that looks a bit better. Revit will find its midpoint for me straight away. And let's put that there. All right, so it already cuts for me, puts in my sliding door and the annotations to go with it. Next thing I want is let's put in a roller door here. Insert, load family. Scroll right down. Um, looking for my overhead rolling or sectional. Well, let's go for sectional. Open. Architecture door. Roller door is there straight away. 2400 wide. Very short. So edit type. Duplicate. Let's make it. Um, this here is the height. It has to be at least 2100 high. Okay, 100. So what I'm doing here is just changing the height of the door. Okay, okay. And let's put this here in the middle for a single garage. All right, so what have we done? Come back to our 3D view. 
we've got some doors inside, doors at the front, and our roller door here. Now if I put it in the wrong spot or I want to change it after, I can. I can just select the door, edit type, and I can change it in here. The other thing that I can do is I can select any of them and I can change the door type in here. So if I want this to be one of these, it changes for me straight away. I don't have to play around with anything. All right, Revit is very simple to use. Once you get your head around it, getting your head around it is a bit tricky, but once we can start using it, it's very quick, a lot quicker than AutoCAD. Now the next thing we need to do is some windows. So window, got fixed windows in here. Let's load family. Australia, looking at the windows. Got awnings with trim. I have my sliding with trim. Let's go for some sliding windows. And in here I have some preloaded um, sliding windows. I can also edit type and change them in here as well. Make sure you duplicate. Um, to look at these windows, you have to go through Stegbar or Trend Windows to work out which sizing you want. Just like we did in AutoCAD to find out our standard sizes. So let's just use some bigger windows for now. Um, these here will be okay. Just to get our head around it, let's put one here. Uh, let's find the middle of the room. There. And let's put another one in here. Uh, let's put, say, one, two meters from that wall. Kara doesn't need one. Put some nice windows in there as well. So, load family. Awning with trim. Let's put in some awning windows somewhere. Um, higher up, like that. So, 915 by 8, 1830. Let's put one here. Zoom right in. Put one next to it. Let's put a third one, and let's put a fourth one, why not? There's a couple of nice windows here as well. All right, back to our 3D, let's have a look. Well, I've got some windows placed all around, which is nice. Stack of them in here, another sliding window in the other ones. Let's look at my elevations. Well, these are my sliding doors. Look at my east, these are all the windows for me much quicker than AutoCAD. Uh, let's put in a concrete floor. So let's put in our slab, so architecture floor. I don't have a 100 mil slab, so let's edit type, duplicate, 100 millimeter slab. Same thing, edit, and this time we're going to specify the material. So click on it, click these three dots. You're going to be using this a lot when we look at our footings and how to do them, um, but we're going to make our slab um, be concrete. So these are my materials that I can pick from. I have heaps of them here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type it up the top. Let's type in concrete. Let's go for cast in place, 35 MPA. Let's go OK. Let's change the thickness here to 100. Go OK. Go OK again. Now this here is going to be the most annoying part of Revit for you. And the most annoying part of Revit is this cross or this tick. If you do not pick either of these options, you cannot pick anything else. Everything else is flagged out. Whether you exit it or finish it, it's up to you, I don't care, but you cannot pick anything else before you complete that. So let's draw in our slab and then we can click the tick. What it's asking for is our boundary lines. This here is the wall, so I can pick the walls, or I can pick the lines, or I can draw it in any of these shapes. Typically, I pick the lines. 
Now, which line do I want to pick? Well, my slab runs to the outside. So I want to pick the outside lines. So there, click the green tick, and now we have a slab. If I can't find it, so here, if I hover over, if I click tab, I pick all the walls. If I click tab again, pick another couple, tab, 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 there's my slab. See? So what we do is if I can't find something, or I want to pick something, Hover through, click tab, and it runs through the selection as to what's underneath where your mouse is sitting. Look at my 3D. Now I have a floor slab sitting in here. Well, what's next is obviously the roof. So let's come through and let's draw a roof. So architecture roof. Now what it's saying is, hey, you, at the moment you're drawing on the finished floor level, come on. The roof's not going to go on the ground, is it? The roof's going to sit up where the walls are. What are you doing? So let's change it. I want the roof to go to the ceiling level. So it's gone, hey, we noticed you being stupid. Move it up. Ceiling level, yes. Now this time, I want the eave overhang to be 450. I have a function here saying define slope. So that means every time I click, it's going to define the slope. Fair enough, we can change it after. Type of roof it is, any of the cut planes, and where it's sitting. Well, at the moment I have a 400 mil roof, which is ridiculous. So let's make it a 125 mil thick. You can edit type and reduce it if you would like to. 125 is okay. So picking the walls, 450 overhang, Let's pick the outside walls where the roof sits. These little triangles is just saying, hey, this roof defines the slope, which I will explain in two seconds. Now, picked all the walls. In here, my slope is a bit excessive. Let's make it 22.5. This is the pitch of the roof. Click the green tick. All right, this here will come up. Revit will automatically save the project for you and it just reminds you constantly um, about saving. So make sure you're saving as you go, um, but Revit will keep reminding you. So I've drawn a roof on, so let's have a look. If I look at my ceiling level, I have a roof sitting here. The roof looks a bit funny. Um, and that's just due to where the camera is sitting. So here, what I can see is my view range. It's this button here. It's where the camera is sitting is too low. So I can either edit it from here or I can go VR on the keyboard. will get me to the same thing. But this is what we want to shift where the camera is cutting. So this is just saying, hey, camera sitting at some point we're cutting it a bit too low. You might want to move it up so we can see everything. So let's say if I change this to 6,000, this to 3,000, what happens? I can see a bit more of the roof. So I'm shifting the camera up towards me. If I reduce that, 1,500. All right, I push it down too much. 4,500, how's that? Now I can see the roof line. All I've done is shift where the camera is cutting from. Just trying to understand and visualize in 3D can be a bit tricky. Um, but what you can see is if I just spin this around, where that camera was sitting was cutting purely through here somewhere and missing the top part of it. All right, let me just spin the house back and I'll go through that in a sec. So Revit does my ceiling, um, sorry, my roof layout for me. All right, remember, angle means an angle, come straight, angle means a straight, we get the opposite angle, and so on. Does it all for you. Now, 
if I edit the footprint, if I was to alter this and go, hey, I don't want this to define the slope anymore. Click the tick. What happens? Well, my roof has just absolutely gone nuts. All right. So if I spin that around, the roof's gone stupid. All right. So what it's saying is going, hey, if it's fixed to this wall, we fix it here and then it comes up from there. That's what's defining the slope. It's the point from where the angle begins. So it fixes from here and then it comes up at the angle of the pitch. In 3D, you can either spin from this block, so I can click anywhere on this block and rotate the house around, or if I click this wheel, orbit, so hover your mouse over orbit and it will spin it around for you, making sure it's still clicked down. I can um, obviously pan around, I can rewind, so I can go back to where I was before. Um, can zoom in, zoom out. Now I've lost my house. ZE will get me back to it. Um, but yes, there's a few different things that we can do. Now I've completely lost the house. ZE. All right, so a few different things that we can tick around with. Um, all good functions of Revit, all good fun. Um, we will use a bit more of it when we come through on Thursday with a house. We can also walk through it. Um, but like I said, I'll go through that later. All right, so we've drawn basically a 3D house, which gets us going, gets us a good understanding of how the architectural side works. So please make sure you draw this up. Um, on Thursday, I'll have a bit more of a complicated plan to go through with you. Um, and in the next video, I'll go through some other functions, other architectural functions of Revit. Thanks, guys.